Welcome to this Painting Buddha Academy exclusive next part of the Signa Warjack. This is where we stand at the moment and when you look not even that carefully you will notice that there are many many gold parts on, <laughs> around this model. Um, and uh, yeah in this part we will show you how to paint all these uh, glorious gold parts uh, that really help uh, to bring a lot of noblesse to models and make them more uh yeah well look more expensive actually <laughs> <laughs> no it's really nice the color combination of the blue and gold is a very classical very uh, like royale kind of color choice and yeah i'm really interested to see how you paint that gold yeah so um here we will show you two different uh parts in in gold uh one will be this um area here around his head, um, this armor piece, and uh, the other one will be um, this uh, swan, actually. Yeah. Actually, when you use gold, um, it is good to think about uh, real armor, and in real armor, gold is more used um, as um, like a decoration. Uh, decoration material. rims and frames. Since gold is not a, not a very hard material, it's very soft, it's really uh, more to show off your wealth and uh, yeah. That's it. But um, I think it's okay if we, if we paint this here also gold. Uh, it might also be brass. Uh, brass is sometimes also pretty golden. Um, might be more um, more reddish than gold, yeah. but that's... Yeah, I think it's really nice to, to frame that, uh, the small head, because you still have the blue from the armor part, and if you frame that with gold, I think it will look really nice. Yeah. Okay, so let's get right to it. Um, for the gold, I will use a mixture of... Uh, Shining gold from uh, uh, the Citadel range, and uh, a little bit tin spits, and a little bit of green. Actually, I really like green uh, in in the gold. Um, but you can see it here on the palette. This here is the pure shining gold, and this is already the mix with some tin spits in it. And here is some some green. Uh, the green we used is a, a Vallejo model wash. So yeah, we start. Bit darker with this, and uh, we use the big brush and apply it. Start applying it here on the on the surface that we want to turn into gold. Yeah, and again, it's easier if you just go plate by plate and not just uh, smear the paint all over it because it's really hard to get the metal paint out of the leaves. Yeah, that's true. And also it's good for this step if you apply it uh, a bit more on the thick side, like not uh, not very, very thin. Not too thick though. I mean, it is really, it comes up to, to I think, your experience with it. But uh, you have to find the balance, the right balance. If you apply it too thin, obviously you can always re uh, apply another, uh, uh, another layer. The problem with that is that if you look closely, you see the, those little rivets here everywhere yeah so you don't want to uh, flood them with with color so uh, they will disappear just a little bit yeah but I think it's already quite amazing the change from the dark frame around the head and now the bright golden one yeah. okay we will allow this to dry and then we will see if we need another another layer but I think that should be yeah, all that should be fine. Okay, we okay. allow this to dry. As for the next part, I will use some scotch brown mixed with some black, um, which will create a color that is uh, pretty dark. Mm -hmm. And when it dries out, it will it will be um, more matte, so it will take a lot of the shine from this uh, surface uh, from yep. the metal that we have uh, put there before. And with this, we, we apply a, a fine wash on the whole surface, also the re uh, recesses. And you will see in a second uh, what the difference is. Okay, don't, uh, don't let it pool too much. Little bit 
good pooling is fine, but <laughs> example here is uh, it's a little bit too much. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I can just draw it down with the brush like that. Use the blow dryer to to dry this. As a result, you see that uh, a lot of the shine has gone, but it is still there. If you tilt it around, yep. you see that it kind of yeah kind of reappears. And this is a good uh, uh, this is a good starting point for um, for the next step. You might also want to um, want to add a little bit more of the brown into these uh, these recess areas here, so they don't shine anymore so strong. If the color doesn't reach everything, also here if you have uh, yeah like this hides plates mm. up there okay the next step is to take some of the now pure shine uh, shining gold because as a reminder before you had um, you had a little bit green and uh, a little bit thin bits in it now we can take it pure and um, See the, the, the difference here? Yep. And uh, we will start to apply it uh, on on those plates. Um, so the they create a more smooth um, uh, surface. It's good to paint this with a little bit of a texture and use also the gypsy brush to yeah, to avoid uh, to Thick um, cool edges. Yeah. See, this will again bring the shine back, but only where you really want it to. Mm -hmm. And these textures, they don't have to be too small. This is like the first um, light that you put on. Um, after that, we will go in with finer scratches. But this is uh, more like a like a global light situation again that the that the the, the gold has here. Yeah, yeah. I also, by giving like larger textures, it's nice because it's again it's a variation in surface. So um, compared with the other. Especially the large blue surfaces, it's really nice to have like the, those small, like dense looking highlights there. Yes. And it's also good that these are segmented, so you can work your way down. Really very easy to, to make, the, make it like that, one after another. Okay, let's not forget about these inner edges here. Okay. The next step would be to use a Griffion sepia. It will give the metal a little bit uh, more yellowish tint. And also mix in a little bit of green, maybe. So we go with the with the model wash, probably for the green one. Okay, so it's rather a tiny bit of green and more. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's good to always mix in a little bit of green at this step. Uh, since it will give the uh, the gold a little bit uh, greenish tint, and um, it's really it's really good to not to go for straight yellow or something like that. You know, gold has often enough, um, yeah, often enough some some green. Also, it's nice uh, if the two layers of the red brown uh, and the green overlap, uh, they become somewhat neutral from the color. So, yeah. So nice and interesting effect. Okay, we let this dry. Okay, at this stage we change the brush to the smaller brush. Uh, this one. 
Actually, if you wonder, this is a zero size of the Series 7 miniature series of Windsor Newt. And um, now I will mix, uh, use some of the gold that I used before as the base in the brush. And here I have some uh, extra steel, silver, uh, from the Valleho Model Air range. And um, it is good to use uh, a, a tiny little bit of it in the gold. So um, it comes. Oh. It is. It is near uh, to the silver that you have painted before. That way, you will. Um, it will allow the the metal to yeah to merge more with the with the other metals in the in the model. Mm -hmm. Mark down those little rivets, and there is four of them on each of these uh, armor plates. Yeah, compared with the other rivets on the model, those are really small. I think there should be one here. I can't see it, but I'll just mark it down. <laughs> Anyways. Okay, now the next step is to, again, mix some of the steel into the, uh, the shining gold. And with this, we start to put a highlight on the top part of the gold here. Yeah. And be careful not to, to do too much because you don't want this to end up looking like silver. Yeah, just just touch some some spot here and then pull it down very very gently. Down here, I would mix in some more of the more of the gold again, so it's not so silver yeah. as on the top. I think I will do the other side uh, of cam because yeah, it's, it's really hard to see with the arm yeah, with the position of the camera. Okay, um, and now the next step is to tone tone this down uh, to the bottom part quite strong uh, in a quite strong way. And to achieve that, we mix some of the tank brown with the black here. And um, turn the model around. What? And start to place this part here down. Yeah, again, uh, again, just to mention it, uh, Matt just turned the figure around so he has a better angle to pull his brush. Yes, towards me better than away. To go even a bit deeper, I would add a little bit more um, Chaos Black to that and increase the, the contrast with the tank brown. Yeah, maybe you, you can see Matt works it the shadows on each lower part of, of each tile mm, and he just leaves a tiny bit of uh, space untouched on the top that is just a very nice highlight yes yeah like that yeah it looks really good i will do the other sides uh, of cam again because it's really difficult to reach and uh, to film and yeah then we'll be back for the next step now the next step is to get again switch to the smaller brush and uh, make some of the shining gold with just a tiny tiny little amount of the of the steel. Yeah. You have to be very careful <laughs> with the steel though. Um, only some. Th this is like the last the last touches that uh, that you do uh, when it comes to the highlight. So. So 
just a tiny bit on the upper edge of each of the blades. Yeah, like this. Yeah, really nice. It really starts to come together with uh, all the little tiny dots and sparkles and also the the gradient, the general gradient that you see yeah. that we have applied. Still, um, there's one thing that you can add. In this case, it's a little bit of purple ink again. Why? Because we can unify the, uh, the gold with the rest of the model. We have some purple uh, and all the other parts. So yeah, also on the gold, on the very, very uh, deep shadow, you can add a little bit of it and it will really help. Add it here, clean the brush, and pull it up. That's it. And you can do this uh, scale by scale. Yeah, you can see the little violet below. Yeah, yeah, it's really nice. Okay, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, depending on where the, the gold part is that you paint, you might also, as you can see here, add some, some tiny little reflex, reflections that come from the chipping. Um, or, yeah, but this is up to up to where you know it depends on where the the metal part is what the use yeah, is how, how used it is exactly mm. yeah yeah and uh, that's pretty much uh, all that you do uh, on the on the shield here um i think i will just correct uh, this side also and uh, then we will go uh, straight to the next part which will be will be this swan here okay perfect and now the next step will be to paint this golden swan, which is located here on the top of the, the armor, um, the head armor. Um, and for this, we will go a little, a little bit different approach. Um, as you can see here on the palette, I have again the shining gold and again a little bit of the tin spits to tone it down just, just a little. And we will apply one layer of that, uh, has to be pretty um, pretty clean and like pretty smooth, so we switched on onto the big brush. Quite a lot of people have difficulties to paint metal when it comes to really large surfaces like that. Yeah, the thing is also is this, um, we were really thinking around a lot if we really should paint this uh, gold. As you can see the swan is located on the, on the top and uh, therefore it is a very um, dominant element of yeah. the whole uh, war jack. Um, Actually, it would have also been an option to paint that white, but mm. yeah, we actually thought quite a lot about that. Yeah, but I think it's I think it's good if you tone it down and give it a bit, little, little bit diff, a different impact than the rest. This will really become like the icon uh, of the whole model. So it's uh, it's a good thing to yeah to 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 not think that uh, something like that would spoil the whole model. It is a question of really toning it uh, the right way, and uh, yeah. Okay, that's it. Um, it's very important that this dries entirely again because we don't want the metal pigment to separate. We will keep, uh, wait until this is dry or we can use the blow dryer to, do, to speed things up. Um, one interesting thing that you can see when you tilt it, uh, and I just saw it on the monitor, so it's uh, quite a good thing. Um, you see, you can start to simulate um, how, you want, how you want to paint the reflection point on, the, on this one. Because at, at the moment there is no shadow painted, but you can see that the light really formulates these uh, darker areas here. So 
I kind of like this, uh, yeah, this here, that um, there is a shadow here in this part and also a little bit shadow here and this will be the reflection point here. Yeah. So I think we will try to recreate that. For this, we, we will use some of the Umbral Umbra. It is a color that, you see this brown color, um, that is very similar to that and it will also remove the shine from there. So yeah, I think we will use this. And a little bit of black, but just uh, just a hint. So this let's draw. Mm -hmm. Now we will again <laughs> check what we want to go for. Yeah, like that. So it will be this part here. Place some pigments there and then clean the brush and pull them out towards the end. <laughs> the other side was here on this wing. Yep. So there's a little edge here. We don't want the, the edge to become too strong, but. Yeah, yeah, really nice. Again, one more. Again, the other side. Yeah, it's really nice this way. Also, the dark upper edge of the wings contrasts really nice with the highlight point on the on the other side of the armor. Mm -hmm. So um, a little bit here, just uh, to be to also not forget about this middle point here, but not too strong. Just uh, just a little bit like that. Yeah. Now, in order to give this a little bit uh, different impact than the gold uh, here, for example, or uh, here, we will use um, a little bit of a very, very shiny um, orange, actually. This is a Tamiya, uh, Tamiya color, actually, it's a, it's a mixture of a clear yellow and a clear red, which creates something like an orange. And um, it is actually a color that dries uh, like that. So you see it's super, super shiny. And um, the tone that we have here really will help to, to transform the gold into something a little bit more yellowish, more, more orangey. Um, and this is what we want to do. Uh, it's almost like a rich honey color, also from the, from the wafted leaves. It's really mm -hmm. nice. Yes. And this we will paint in the, uh, here in the highlight area. And not so much in the, in the shadow area. And only a little bit of it. So, don't go too wild. A little bit. Yeah. And also here on the outer wing. Yeah, sometimes if you you lose the the gloss or the satinness in, in, in your metals because you've gone a bit too far with the with the shadows, it's quite nice to to use a, a thin glaze of Britannia to get again that rich metal look yes some people also put a um, like a real gloss on their metals um, i don't think that looks too realistic yeah, to be honest yeah, yeah. it looks just like i don't know maybe it is supposed to look like an oiled weapon or something but um yeah, yeah it looks too plastic like from yeah. from my taste as well but this is this is here uh, as i said this is to to, to really give it a tone a little bit more yellow as you see you cannot influence the color or the tone with many different uh, the colors you could give it a more reddish um, tint uh, green would also work I guess so but yeah this is uh, what we were aiming for till now and mm -hmm. uh, the next step is to use this um, metallic gold here from the Vallejo air range you can see it here on the palette and then contrary also to the steel that we have been using before it has a greenish uh, greenish well, tone to it here so it's a very, very nice color and it will um, help us 
to differentiate the the gold. You see, uh, yeah. the gold. Um, yeah, the gold from the from the ordinary steel. <laughs> With this, we will start to draw in some fine, very very fine uh, reflections and like highlights, colors on these wings here. Yeah, again, be very, uh, very careful. Just do bit by bit um, because that stuff is really super shiny. Yes, it actually stays uh, wet for a very long time. <laughs> yeah, just like that around the upper edge so we, uh, but that would definitely catch some reflection and if you go too wide then quickly gypsy brush and just correct it very smoothly yep And now I will mix a little bit of the of the highlight color with a little bit of the gold, but just of the shining gold, just a little bit to um, not have the maximum highlight here. Yeah, like that. And uh, this I will place at um, at the space where I want the bigger highlight here. And then quickly again with the gypsy brush, we build a. Uh, yeah, something like a little bit more um uh, yeah, like a softened edge. Yeah, so like a softer softer highlight. Yeah. yeah, I thought it looks good before, but now with the bright highlight on top it's it's really, really nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we go again with the pure uh, metallic uh, gold metallic color. And uh I just saw that for example this uh, wing here it would need another light point. Because the other one has uh, has one, yeah. so something like that, and also maybe here. The next step is to take some uh, umbral umbra again, the brown tone, and um, with that we will. Uh, draw a little little line. We will uh, draw a little uh, brown line down here to uh, to separate it from the blue also. Yeah. Also here. So it um yeah, you can see it more perceive it more as uh, two different elements. Yeah, it's important to have a, uh, like a, like a clean dark edge between those those elements, mm -hmm. especially like if you do it like Matt does it now, just put it more on the shadow side of the swan and not all over the place. Yes. And also maybe very very thin line, which will be difficult, but has to be done. Yeah, up there. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's nice. Yeah. So yeah, and also here. But be careful with that because it can look very yeah, <laughs> horrible yeah. very quickly. Yeah, yeah. can it's, escalate very quickly. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so uh, the the lining uh, part is quite important. If you miss it, the, it will lack something in the model. But if you overdo it, uh, all the work you've done previously yeah. is, is just ruined. Okay, and that's the one of the last steps. I again take some of the orange 
and uh, apply it around here. So it is a little bit like a wash. So the, um, the yeah. top, yeah, the you don't it's not that bald and yeah, yeah. you don't see the um, the steps so much the in between steps also here. And you can see you can you can really tone down even what you have done before with that. So okay, and to keep the consistency of what we do, um, we also have a little bit of the purple ink again. And uh, this we will apply just on the very end of the, the wing here. Yeah, because this side is also really facing downwards and the purple here is really nice because it really enriches the shadows. Yes. Clean the brush and then... It's just a little hint, but you know, since we have used it in all the other metals, it's uh, it's something that we we should definitely do. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think I will um, just add some very, very small uh, lights here. That's the very last step um, with the with the golden steel again at the at the very end of these uh, these wings. Like that just just some two or three points. Yeah, but uh, this concludes the the golden parts actually. So you oh. see here the difference. Here is the other golden part. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's really nice to see all that variation of uh, the sword, of the of the different gold tones, even on the sword and the and the swans, and yeah, looking really good. Mm -hmm. Thanks for showing us also how you work with the with the Tamiya Clears. It was really nice. Yeah. So thank you very much for. Uh, watching all this and uh, taking your time to uh, see how the metals are painted. Thanks also for Ben for his expertise on gold. <laughs> he knows a lot about that, as you <laughs> saw. Hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, and if you paint some awesome war machine stuff uh, or uh, awesome project uh, along the academy, just uh, send us your stuff. Yes, we would be very happy if you. Or pictures send of your stuff, not the stuff. <laughs> exactly. Well, you could send your stuff too, but. No, thank you very much. Goodbye. Thanks.